Oh, go on, boy. Go on. Give her the beans. Ew. How's it going, everyone? Today, we've got an SLK supercharged, and I'm here with Sean. Once again, hi, guys. Once again, the owner couldn't be in the video, but don't worry, Sean's here to fill in that spot. So let's get into the questions. So what would be the specs of the car? Okay, so this is a 2.3 litre supercharged four-cylinder engine, producing 194 horsepower in a, obviously an early 2000s sports car. Go on. I mean, she does pull for going uphill quite well. Yeah, it does. It goes well, it's just shy of 200 horsepower, so it's quite good. Yeah. It's not, 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 not huge amounts of weight here either, actually, which is quite nice. So what sort of cars would this compete against? I think, it, you know, this is a, obviously it's, it's a very similar platform to a Miata. You know, you got, you know, front, front engine, rear wheel drive, not very big, not very heavy. Uh, obviously it's got a lot more power than a Miata, mm -hmm. uh, but it's those kind of things, you know, you got your Miata, you got your BMW, um, it was a Z Coupe, I think it was called. Z3s. Z3s, yeah, the Z3s. Yeah. Um, you know, those kind of cars. Toyota MR2s. Yeah, MR2. Probably more the like pre turbocharged ones. Yeah. And the new ones are, well, the newer ones were naturally aspirated. What does a new Miata have over this? What new MX5 have over this? Looks, but I think it's a better looking car. So, so what's the difference, right? It looks different, right? Because obviously it's a newer car. It probably has less power than this, right? And what else is it? What else? Why would you go and spend 30, 40 grand buying a new MX-5 over buying one of these? I think most people just buy them purely for the looks and the notoriety of MX-5s. Yeah, but in the sense of like, you know, if you're actually making a smart decision, this is a smarter decision than buying a new MX-5. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me about the engine. Yeah, like I said, this is a 2.3 liter supercharged engine. But the interesting thing about this here is it's actually got a clutch on the supercharger pulley. So if you know superchargers, you've got a normal pulley and it's always engaged. Yep. So you're driving and you're using the supercharger continuously. But a supercharger takes power to make power. So you're always you know, using power, uh, which obviously drains your fuel consumption. Where this here, it drives like a naturally aspirated four cylinder. And the minute you put your foot flat or you put your foot on a certain threshold, it engages the clutch kicking the supercharger in and giving you that like supercharger like boost like nitrous nearly yeah 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 but uh, yeah that's how it works so let's go go on Oof. <laughs> oh go on boy go on give her the beans ew <laughs> so what does compressor mean on the car well as you can see there right it says compressor right yeah compressor is actually a german name for supercharger so if you see it like a Mercedes-Benz driving around and it says compressor on the back, mm -hmm. it means it's actually supercharged. Okay. So just a different name for it. Okay, so it's specifying what it is. Yeah, it's a, it, that basically says supercharger if you're German. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, so what would be the features of the car? Well, it's obviously a Mercedes-Benz, so you have a lot of creature comforts. You have the electric windows, you have an electric roof, you know, obviously you don't have to physically manually do it. Yeah. You know, you've got your air conditioning, you've got pretty much all those things there. You've got loads of storage space, actually, which is quite surprising inside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like, you know, Mercedes from 2000. It's got more than creature comforts than you probably needed, but it's aged well. What do you think of the car so far, actually? I do quite like it. It's very comfortable for what it is. Yeah. Quite a bit of, I mean... I can see why they took it to France. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, and so you've got cruise control, you've got a speed limiter, so if you want to limit your speed, it's got digital, uh, well, all digital, but still digital. You've got your indicators, you've got your wipers, you've got your, all you want. So what would be the history about the car? Well, this is actually my grandfather's car. He bought it a couple of years back, and uh, the previous owners had actually taken this car to France. Whoa. So there's actually a considerable amount of trunk space. They drove to France, and I think they spent, I think it was two weeks driving around France, just, you know, touring, and uh, yeah. they said it was a great car. It's just, uh, they were getting a bit old, and it just wasn't, it wasn't suitable for, you know, their age at the time. I think they might've had some medical conditions, something, you know, but. Yeah, so this is the history of how my granddad actually got the car. So my grandparents moved uh, in, well, to, to Northern Ireland in 20, I think it was 2016 or 17. And they wanted to get a car because to drive around and stuff, you know, this is my granny was still alive. And my mom and brother and dad had all gone to South Africa to actually, it was my sister's, uh, she was giving birth to my niece. 
So I stayed behind with my grandfather and uh, granny yep. to obviously make sure they were okay and I had school and stuff. And in the January of, I think it was 2017 or 20, 2018, one of the two years, my granddad was already wanting to go get a car. So while they were all away, I actually found this car on, I can't remember if it was Facebook or Gumtree. I took them up in my car at the time, which was a Corsa, the good old trusty Corsa. Took them all the way up, it was up Port, uh, Port Rush direction. Yep. Went and had a look at the car, and uh, that's how we got it. Wow. I, I was the one who actually found the car and took them up to go get it. Fair enough. By the way, it wasn't actually the Corsa VXR, if people are wondering. Yeah, it was a 1.2 Corsa. It was, I just passed my uh, driver's license. So we've spoken a little bit about the car. What year would it be? So this is actually a 2000 example. So this is 23 year old currently, which is was 24 years old next month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, isn't it? Think, wow. Thinking about it. You know, having all electric windows and stuff, you kind of think, when you think of a 20 year old car, you think of, I don't know, for me personally, I think of like an old, like 1980s car. Yeah. But yeah. What's the mileage on it? 89,000 miles. God, and I think there's only about, you know, about three or 4,000 miles in the last, probably like six years, I think. Seriously. There's very, very, very little mileage. Go on. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, but it gets so much fun. Go on. So obviously this has an electric roof. Tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah, so it's obviously electric. So you've got your electrics and hydraulics in the boot. And the boot actually fully folds away into the, the trunk space, which obviously means you do lose a bit of storage space in the boot. But the good thing about this car is, imagine you're driving around. It's a lovely sunny day. You want to put the roof down, but you've been shopping. You put the roof down and you don't want to squ 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 squish all your bread and milk and stuff. There's a, actually a lever or like a, not a lever, a little tray you have to pull out. And it clips into a into place, which means you actually physically can't in, you know, encroach on where the, the roof folds into. And there's that uh, little switch there, I think we're probably yeah. the best way of calling it. And it folds away and you can actually still have a decent bit of boot space. Wow. So you can still go shopping and do everything you need and have the roof down or put the roof up, whatever. For such a tiny car, this has a lot of room in it. Yeah, you've got storage space inside. You've got a cigarette cigarette uh, lighter, mm -hmm. which is quite uncommon these days. You know, you, yeah. see, you see them, but you don't actually get the little button. You've got an uh, ashtray. You've got a little coin holder that actually folds out of the ashtray, which is quite an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, you've got another little like cubby hole where you can put like random stuff in. Yeah. It's like cigarettes. Probably what, what it's designed for. You've got your normal Mercedes storage compartment. Uh, then you've got the center glove box or the glove box. Yeah. You've got storage space on the driver's side. You've got the door pockets and behind the driver as well. You also have door space or storage space as well. As well. Yeah. So much stuff. Sh shockingly amount of space. No wonder someone took it to France and back. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. For yes, minutes. go on. Yes, boy. Oh, rocket ship. <laughs> Drop down to two degrees. Oh, yes. Oh. Two and a half degrees. Oh, oh. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's mental. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, big thanks, Grander Joe, for letting us use this car. So, yep, nothing else to say, guys, but make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Do you know why BMW drivers don't use indicators? Yeah, I know why. You know, you normally indicators, you click, click, click it up, yep. and it works. And you click it down, and it works. You can't in a BMW, you go click, and it goes back to the center, and you go other way, and you just look like a right knob. <laughs>